Um, so I'm back. Carl invited me for uh, my annual Twin Basic update. There's not a lot of new features to show in Twin Basic from last year. And so because of that, we decided uh, to combine this into a short Twin Basic update and then a second session uh, talking about AI uh, for access developers. So as Peter said, uh, my name is Mike Wolf. Uh, you can check out some of my uh, work at uh, no longer set.com, in particular, the um, we can review uh, articles. So, what is Twin Basic? For those that are here for the first time, Twin Basic is a fully compiled language. Uh, so, as opposed to VBA, uh, where you have to run it inside of Outlook or Access or Excel, you can create executables, you can create DLLs uh, with Twin Basic. It is 100% backwards compatible with both VBA and VB6. Uh, and this is real backwards compatibility, not that VB.NET garbage that they said was mostly backwards compatible. And it really just shared some syntax, you know, most of the syntax, but under the covers, it was a completely different language. Um, Twin Basic is, is truly backwards compatible with uh, VB6. In addition to that backwards compatibility, it also introduces a bunch of new language features for any of you that have worked with .NET. Uh, a lot of these things are going to look familiar. Uh, limitations that um, as VBA gets older and hasn't really received any updates in probably over 20 years now, um, outside of you know, some limited 64-bit support that got added in 2007. Um, but other than that, it's for good and bad, it's roughly the same language that we had in the late 90s. So Twin Basic adds a bunch of new language features, and um, I'm not going to go into all those uh, details here. I've done uh, several past presentations that talk about some of those things. And um, on my website, um, there's an article up today where you can go back and review those earlier um, presentations. OK, so the big question is uh, progress update. What has happened over the past year since the last uh, time that we met? Couple new features. Uh, you can now create Windows services with Twin Basic. Um, so this is something that years ago I looked into um, at something that I was trying to do related to access, and I thought, well, you know, a Windows service might be nice. <laughs> and uh, I spent about 20 minutes on Google trying to figure out what would be involved, and I decided I didn't want to be a, become a C++ expert. So I quickly abandoned the idea and um, never thought about it again. Fast forward um, 15 years, and now um, you can create Windows services very easily in Twin Basic. Um, Wayne has a couple of uh, sample projects that will get you started, a simple and a complex um, version. So we'll talk about that a little bit more um, in a few minutes. Added uh, multi-document interface forms and also access-like reports. And we'll look at the reports here in a minute. Um, so static library support is another thing that got added. So uh, you can take a, a C++ library, um, for instance, uh, SQLite or libdeflate, uh, which is used for compression. And what is meant by static linking is that in VBA, we're used to using tools, references to refer to another um, library. And if you do it that way, then when the end user runs your program, they have to have that library installed on their computer somewhere. Um, with static linking, what happens is that that library, that code gets built into the executable. And so when um, you're deploying your application, you don't have any external dependencies. So that's a, a nice feature to streamline um, deployment. And the, the big thing is really uh, the compatibility work, uh, trying to get over the finish line of that 100% compatibility goal. And so there's been a lot of um, improvements and updates and bug fixes around uh, working with ActiveX controls, um, forms and events, and in particular, matching the idiosyncrasies of VB6, you know, the, the very specific order that events get um, triggered in VB6 and making sure that they work the exact same way in Twin Basic. So, the tentative release date, uh, and uh, I know that having presented this several times, it always feels like the release date is just around the corner. Um, 
but it is currently set now at uh, July 1st. And um, I think from a technical perspective, I think Wayne will um, probably be able to get there in terms of the um, meeting that compatibility goal. My hunch is that as it gets closer, if, if he hits, if his, if the product is technically ready to go, there's probably gonna be some administrative stuff that he's gonna wanna do before the, the actual launch. Um, so I would guess that once it reaches that 100% backwards compatibility goal, that there's probably gonna be a, a few more weeks to months um, before the, the major launch. Uh, so I haven't heard this from Wayne, but I would guess um, in terms of like a, a launch date, probably more like October would be uh, more realistic uh, because I think there's just going to be a lot of admin stuff that has to happen after the technical stuff is finished. Okay, so the real question is um, where are we at on the VB6 compatibility you know, and, and why has it taken so long? Um, because I think last year when I presented, uh, we were looking at a tentative launch date that was right around the same time. It might have also been July 1st, just of 2024. So um, a couple of weeks back at the Microsoft MVP Summit, um, Courtney Owen presented to us uh, the same thing that he did yesterday here um, at DevCon, which is um, the form resizing. And he was explaining it and, and demoing it. And he's told us, you know, the, the feature is about 90% complete. And one of the other Access MVPs, Armin Stein said, um, you know, there's a saying in software that once the project is 90% complete, you're halfway done. And so that's what this chart shows, right? So when you have a project like this at the beginning, you're gonna make a ton of progress. You're gonna knock out stuff. And here you're at the halfway point and you're 90% complete. So if this is VB6 compatibility on the left side, and this is project start to version 1.0 on the X axis, you get, you're about halfway complete once you hit 90%. So where is Twin Basic now? Twin Basic is up here somewhere. <laughs> as you can see, this line gets really thin um, as you get towards this corner. You know, the, the old math phrases, it's an asymptotic uh, graph here, right? So it's, it's really close um, and it's hard to know exactly where it is here, um, but there is, some reason that you want to get to that as close as you possibly can to that 100% mark. Um, you know, you're, you're probably not going to get exactly 100%. Uh, there are certain things that are outside of the scope. Um, so there are some um, VB6 projects that take advantage of the internals of how VB6 works. And um, there's only so much um, that, that you can do where you want to try and um, match that functionality, um, especially if it's you know, individual quirks and, and undocumented implementation details. So what is promising is that a lot of big VB6 projects have been ported and are running in Twin Basic. Um, in terms of commercial projects, the biggest one is uh, Zyplorer, which is a popular um, Windows file manager replacement. Um, and this is running in 32-bit VB6, and um, I had honestly not heard about it. Um, it'll be more popular in Europe. Uh, I believe the developer is is Europe-based, um, but it's a it's a product that you know he's really pushed the bounds of what you can do in VB6, and has a, a project that um, runs uh, has a lot of functionality and has very high performance. And one of the things that he struggled with is that VB6 is 32-bit only. And a lot of concerns among the existing VB6 community is that at some point, 32-bit um, support might just go away entirely uh, or that VB6 might go away in the new version of Windows. So um, this has been ported over. There's a beta in uh, Twin Basic, and um, it's also uh, ported over for 64-bit support. Another big project is Photodemon. So this is a uh, Adobe Photoshop um, or GIMP, if you're familiar with GIMP is a, an open source alternative to Adobe Photoshop. And um, this is an open source project. And I wrote an article um, a few months back uh, detailing how you can take this existing VB6 uh, source code, download it off of GitHub and build it using TwinBasic. 
Um, now you can only build a 32-bit version. Um, there's nothing stopping you from building the 64-bit version other than fixing the 1600 or so API calls uh, that are uh, need to be converted over for pointer safe. Um, but in terms of taking an existing project, bringing it in and getting it to run, um, those are two big projects. And then the third one, uh, just for fun, um, this was posted the other day in the Twin Basic Discord chat, um, where one of the uh, users was able to um, go and grab, there's a VB6 version of Pac-Man, downloaded it, import the file into Twin Basic, click build, and they're running back uh, Pac-Man with zero changes necessary uh, to get the code working. So gives you an idea. Um, there's, you know, Still some things that have to get sorted out in terms of the uh, compatibility, but it's on the right track. So this is just um, a quick preview of the uh, reports. Uh, you can see there's um, QR code uh, controls that are built in. Um, and this is what the designer looks like. So it looks familiar to us as Axis developers. You've got um, sections for the report header, page header, report detail. Um, so it's again, an, if we're looking long term as maybe Twin Basic could someday um, act as an access replacement or at least some of the access functionality, uh, this is a, a key piece. Although to be completely transparent, I think Twin Basic as a full access replacement is probably closer to 10 years off um, as opposed to two to four years. There's a, a lot of work that would have to get done, um, especially to make it um, the same level of compatibility um, that you have with VB6. Okay, so Windows services, um, I'll just talk about this briefly. Um, there are samples built into TwinBasic to demonstrate both simple and complex services. So um, the samples include code for logging to the Windows uh, events. So you can look at things in uh, Windows Event Viewer, uh, support for interprocess communication, uh, IPC. Um, and this new feature opens up new possibilities for access developers. So just to sort of whet your appetite at some of the things that you could do um, and build with Windows services, um, these are just kind of some ideas. Um, you could monitor file drops for automated data import, right? So you can have a service that's running 24-7, um, whether the user is logged in or not, and it's... Uh, especially if you're building the service yourself, you could even embed some of the, the authentication and, and stuff that would need, be needed to integrate with um, you know, things like OneDrive, or you could kick off um, web APIs that run based on Excel files being dropped in a folder, uh, for instance. Um, scheduled data cleanup or archiving tasks. So if you wanted to automate uh, backups of uh, either SQL Server or backend access databases. You could do that kind of thing. Um, syncing access data with web APIs or services. Again, these are all things that are um, playing off the advantages of services, um, being that they can run uh, as long as the computer's on. They can uh, be set to start at system startup before a user has even logged on. Um, another thing you could do is provide real-time database change notifications. Um, run backend processes, like I said, without needing to have the user log in. And the one that um, I'm currently exploring is the idea of uh, having a, a window service that runs similar to uh, Google Updater. So uh, if you're not aware, uh, Google Chrome stays updated but via um, a window service that runs in the background and occasionally checks for updates to see if there are updates available and then will facilitate downloading and installing those updates. And so that's something that um, you could potentially use a Windows service for as well. Okay, so as far as um, the more immediate um, possibilities for access developers, um, back in 2021, when I did my initial um, Twin Basic presentation, um, announcing basically that the alpha version of Twin Basic, which at the time um, was uh, essentially a VS Code add-in, um, I made this bold prediction at the end that by 2025, Twin Basic would replace VBA as the default code editor. And I thought I might actually be right when Wayne posted this um, in the fall or no, I guess it was the summer uh, of 2024, he was working on a proof of concept 
um, for a twin basic integration with VBA um, that would allow you to basically write twin basic code or use the twin basic editor in place of the VBA editor. Um, now, to be completely clear, this is purely a, a proof of concept, um, but I did a, a presentation in Oxford in November and um, Wayne let me, he sent me a, a copy of the uh, the file. I think he also provided one to Wanho because Wanho did, uh, Wanho Luna, another Axis MVP, gave a, uh, a presentation. Uh, it might've been during the AEK actually. So if you were here for that, um, and so I'm not going to do the demo today, but it is actual working code. It's not just you know a theory in, in Wayne's head, um, but it would have a lot more work um, to be um, to actually be implemented. So there's no guarantee that we'll see it, but um, if it does at some point uh, become commercially viable and we do see it, um, Wayne talked about sort of three different potential levels of integration. So at the the basic level, you could have just a straight VBA development environment replacement. Um, so this would just give you modern IDE benefits. Uh, code lens, which is like a, a preview of um, functions that are being called uh, sticky scrolling. Um, so sticky scrolling is if you've got um, if blocks and for blocks, you've got blocks of code, it'll put the opening line um, and it'll keep it locked at the top of the screen. So as you scroll down, you can see the full um, depth and, and all the nesting that you have in your code. Uh, so that's a nice feature. And then inline code hints. Uh, this is sort of the opposite thing. At the end, when you have an end if, um, you can display a, a code hint um, that doesn't add anything to your code. It just displays during the in the development environment saying this is the matching if block. The next level up would be um, providing, allowing you to use twin basic new syntax that's been introduced in twin basic. So some of the new syntax are things like return statements that you would see in other languages for functions, um, short circuit Boolean operations in, and also um, inline initialization. These are all things that um, don't require changes to, they can basically be rewritten using traditional VBA syntax. So transpilable, meaning that you could translate the twin basic code into compilable VBA. And then the, uh, the next option would be uh, potentially full language replacement. This would give you uh, performance improvements, um, generic objects, uh, multi-threading. The key with this one is that it would require the, a, a specific runtime that would have to get deployed um, because there's additional work that um, functionality that it's, that it's adding. Okay, so licensing uh, it is a subscription-based um, software. Uh, the licensing, the costs haven't changed. Um, it's This is the same as it's been for um, at least the last year or two. Uh, this, this does include a 35% um, pre-order discount. And um, if you choose to pre-order before the launch of um, version one, that will be discounted forever. Now, um, all of these are commercial use royalty-free licenses, including the community edition. Um, and the community edition is, is um, pretty generous. You can build basically whatever you want in 32-bit um, running on Windows, and you just get a splash screen if you want 64-bit support. Um, there's a gold lifetime license. Uh, it's 5,000 pounds. That's really geared more for some of those like Zyplor or some of those bigger um, commercial companies that have a lot invested in the VB6 code base. Um, however, um, Wayne has provided um, an offer for a um, perpetual license for DevCon attendees. So um, these slides are available on my public website. So rather than put the link to the slides um, in here, I will drop that in the chat. Um, or if, uh, not sure if Wayne is, is here, if Wayne's here, he could drop that in the chat as well. Um, but if not, I'll drop that in after the presentation. 